Welcome to the Alaska Door Installation Guide. This video is provided as a supplement to the install guide. Please read all instructions prior to beginning installation. Use caution. Improper installation of door can cause severe injury or death. Step 1. Measure door opening and floor to ceiling height. The door tracks have been pre-cut at the factory to match the ceiling measurements given to us at the time of order. Do not cut tracks without consulting the factory first. If tracks will not fit or you feel they need to be cut, please call tech support before proceeding. Step 2. Measure vertical track length. As a rule of thumb, the length of the vertical track will be 30 inches less than the ceiling height. However, in special applications, this measurement may vary. Consult the factory if your measurement results are different than stated. Measure the floor to ceiling height and subtract 30 inches. Measure the bottom of the vertical track to end of the vertical track rail. The rail is where the door rollers will actually roll in. If your ceiling height minus 30 inches does not equal the length of the vertical track, please consult the factory before proceeding. Step 3. Installing Bottom Brackets Place all door sections on the sawhorses with the bottom section being on top. With the right-hand bottom bracket, place cable loop in between the two bracket holes. Insert clevis pin through both holes to hold cable in place. Insert the cotter key through the hole at the end of the clevis pin. Repeat the last two steps for the left-hand bottom bracket. Place the stainless steel bottom brackets on the bottom section and align the pre-drilled hole on brackets and section. Screw the bottom bracket on first with one self-tapping screw. Place U-roller bracket on top of bottom bracket. Align holes and attach with four self-tapping screws. Add the remaining self-tapping screws. Repeat the last step from the left bottom bracket as well. Step 4. Installing hinges on bottom section. Next, put two number 3 hinges on the top of bottom section and a number 1 hinge in the middle of the section and screw the hinges onto one section with the hinge screw provided. Note, when installing hinges, make sure the number on the hinge is on the bottom facing up. Hinges should be installed on the top of each section as shown here. If using plastic hinges instead of stainless steel or galvanized hinges, place the end hinge with multiple roller slots on the end of the section where the number 3 hinge would go. Place the plastic hinges without the multiple roller slots in the center. Step 5. Installing rollers on bottom section. Install roller in the number 3 hinges outside hole farthest from the door section. For 3 inch track, insert roller in the hole farthest from the door section. For 2 inch track, insert roller in the hole closest to the door. Installing vertical track. Place bottom section in opening. Center bottom section with equal overlap on each side. Use a level to make sure section is level. Use shims if need be to make sure door section is level. Caution: Door will not work properly if the door is not level. Position vertical track around the rollers of the bottom section. Vertically align the track so there's approximately 3 quarter inch gap between the edge of the section and the edge of the track. Rollers will have a small amount of play when track is aligned correctly. Make sure all vertical track is plumb and level before attaching to a wall on level floor. Repeat all steps on the opposite side. Step 7. Installing rest of sections. Install number 4 hinges on next panel with number 4 hinges going to outside with number 1 in the middle. Doors are tongue and groove. The male end of the section faces up and the female end faces down. Continue installing hinges in ascending order for each section, with a number 1 hinge remaining in the middle until only one section remains. Now take the next section with number 4 hinges and install rollers in the hole that is furthest from the section. Lift the section up in opening and lower down with rollers now in track until it rests on the bottom section. Center the bottom section. 
continue on with sections until you come to the final section. Step 8. Installing Vertical Track to Horizontal Track Install horizontal tracks to vertical track using two quarter inch track bolts and nuts and one 1 3 8 inch by 1 inch carriage bolt. Support back of track with temporary support to hold weight of door. Note, horizontal tracks should be level or slightly pitched up. Step 9. Installing top fixtures. Disassemble top fixtures and attach top section as shown. Install top section and opening, and then reattach top fixtures with roller and fixture. Tighten bolts so that the top section is affixed to the wall, but not too tightly. If attached too tightly, the door will bind. Step 10. Fasten hinges to door. Screw all sections together with supplied screws. Step 11. Assembling strap E shaft line. All references to the left and right are viewed from inside of the bay looking out. Slide one of the center adjustable bearing plates onto the shaft and position it roughly in the center of the shaft. Slide the right hand black cable drum onto the right end of the shaft with the set screws towards the center. Slide one three quarter inch white PVC spacer onto the right end of the shaft. Slide the right hand end bearing plate onto the right end of the shaft. Repeat the last two steps for the left side of the shaft. Lift entire shaft line assembly and place it on top of horizontal track against the wall. Fasten end bearing plates to the horizontal angle using two 3 8 inch by 1 inch carriage bolts per plate. Fasten end bearing plates to the wall using two 1 and 7 8 inch wood lags per plate. Slide the center bearing plate to the center of the shaft so that it lines up with the center of the door. Level the shaft and fasten the center bearing plate to the wall using two 1 and 7 8 inch wood lags. Make sure the shaft is the same distance from the wall along the entire length. Adjust the bearing on the center plate as necessary to achieve this. Determine on what side of the door you will be installing the counterbalance system. Keep in mind you should have 12 inches minimum of clear space from the edge of the door opening. Slide the shaft so that you leave 6 inches of the shaft exposed outside the bearing on the side opposite to where you will install the counterbalance system. This will leave approximately 12 to 18 inches of shaft exposed on the counterbalance side. Step 12. Installing the Strapeze System Slide one of the Strapeze winding hubs onto the shaft with set screws towards the end bearing plate. Position the winding hub approximately 4.5 inches from the end bearing plate. Slide one of the black plastic guide discs on the shaft with smooth side facing from the winding hub. Slide the back start space or under the shaft with a thicker portion on top of the shaft. Slide remaining winding hub on the shaft with set screws away from the guide disc. While standing on a ladder, remove the strap from the bag and unroll the strap towards the floor. When the strap is completely unwound, you will have a single strap in your hand with two separate loops hanging towards the floor. Hang the single part of the strap on the black start spacer. Adjust the strap according to the strap label that came with the strap. Adjust the strap so that the white stitching on the side of the strap away from the wall matches the first start. Once the first start is set, the white stitching on the wall side of the strap will match the second start. Install strap 1 quarter inch strap pin through the pre-drilled hole in the outer winding hub. Continue pushing the pin through the strap assembly so it runs through the slots in both guide discs, through both winding hubs and over the strap. Once the strap has been installed, the strap ease will look like this. Tighten all set screws on the winding hubs. Add a center bearing to the end of the shaft outside of the strap ease assembly. Fasten to the wall 
to help support the weight stack. Step 13. Assemble weight bracket and rod. Slide strap bracket onto the rod so that the flat bottom portion of the bracket is towards the washers and nut. Thread one 3 8 inch lock nut into the threaded rod so that the end of the rod is flush with the nut. Slide all 1.5 inch washers provided onto the rod. Place a strap spool on each bottom loop as shown. Insert the 3 8 by 3 inch bolts through the holes in the strap bracket and through each spool. Thread a 3 8 inch lock nut on each bolt and tighten only until the end of the bolt is flush with the nut. Note, nuts must not be over tightened. The bolts must have enough play to allow the spools to spin. Step 14. Stacking the weights. Slide the washers onto the strap rod to the top, leaving two washers at the bottom. Place one of the larger 18.9 pound weights on the rod so that it rests on the bottom two washers. Lower one of the washers onto the first weight and stack another 18.9 pound weight on top of the first one. Rotate the second weight 180 degrees so the gaps in the weights are facing opposite directions. Continue stacking the large weights in the same way as described above. Finish by stacking any small 5-pound weights on top of the larger weights, still placing a washer in between each weight. To prevent strap from twisting, hold the clevis bracket and turn the weights until the twisting stops. Step 15. Winding the weights Warning, winding counterweights is extremely dangerous and can cause severe bodily injury or death and should only be performed by a train door installer with the appropriate tools. Insert 5 8 winding bar into either winding hub. While facing the wall, pull the bar towards you and lift towards the ceiling. This is the direction the weights need to be wound. While holding the first winding bar, insert the other winding bar into the winding hub and let it rest against the wall. Important, weights must be wound to their full height at approximately one inch from the guide discs in order for the door to balance correctly. Hand bottom bracket up the shaft by running it behind each roller stem and let bar rest against the wall to prevent weights from falling. Step 16, setting cables and cable drums. Warning, the weight stack is only held by the winding bar against the wall. Use caution in the following steps to ensure the winding bar does not release from the winding hub, which could resolve in the weights free falling. Pull the cable attached to the right-hand bottom bracket up the shaft by running it behind each roller stem. Run the cable on the back side of the cable drum and hook the cable bead into the slot on the drum. Rotate the cable drum until the cable is tight and tighten the set screws on the cable drum. With the cable tight, repeat the last three steps on the opposite side. Remove the vice grip from the shaft and attach it to either of the vertical tracks just above the roller. This will prevent the door from moving when you release the strap winding bar. Step 17. Installing Guide Tube Use caution as the door is now under tension. Push PVC guide tube onto the weight stack from underneath. You will need to pull the weights away from the wall slightly while pushing the tube up and over the weights. Mount the guide tube wall bracket in the center of the guide tube. Make sure the bracket is in line with the guide tube. Attach one of the guide tube brackets to the wall bracket using the quarter inch bolts and nuts provided. Position the remaining guide tube bracket around the tube and attach it to the other bracket using the quarter inch bolt and nuts provided. Step 18. Install track back hangs. 
Remove vice grip from the vertical track. Raise door approximately 4 foot off the ground. Caution: Do not raise the door past 4 foot, as the horizontal tracks are not supported from the ceiling yet. Place a vice grip on vertical track to keep door open at 4 foot off the ground. Position horizontal tracks so that both tracks run parallel to the door sections. Use punch angle to support horizontal track from ceiling as shown. Note, horizontal track should be level or slightly pitched up when supported from the ceiling. Step 19. Testing door operation. Remove vice grips from vertical track and close the door. Run the door open and closed to make sure no components are binding. To check the balance of the door, raise the door to approximately chest height. The door should balance at this position and not creep upwards or downwards.